Clark, a very good evening and welcome to the first of our second round matches in the 1980 Tooth Cup. Tonight, an interesting match between first uh, round winners Eastern Suburbs who opened the 1980 Cup Series with a win against Brisbane and they're up against Newtown tonight here at Sydney's Leichhardt Oval and Newtown, they pulled off the first shock of the season in the Tooth Cup when they defeated Manly. That started a, a losing trot for Manly and a winning sequence for Newtown and certainly they stood up that night and were counted and are continuing with their very good form. With me joining the commentary tonight, Keith Barnes as usual, and Jill New South Wales representative and Canterbury forward, Graham Hughes, who's played for the State of both Rugby League and Cricket. And Graham's been with us before on Cup Telecast, and we look forward to his comments during the evening. And so back to the clash between Eastern Suburbs and Newtown. Both sides robbed of uh, certain uh, stars in their lineup, in particular Newtown without Tom Radonikus and Jeff Bugden. And Radonikus has been an on-field and off-field inspiration for the Newtown Jets and he certainly has been the key figure in the resurgence of the mighty blues of Newtown. They went uh, to the sports ground a fortnight ago in the first round premiership clash against Eastern Suburbs and they won that match by 22 points to 6. Eastern Suburbs tonight will be going in hoping to reverse that situation but they take the field without Queensland hooker Johnny Lang and Queensland wing three quarter Kerry both dead. And Eastern Suburbs tonight are going to find Newtown a hard side to beat, I feel, after a 22-6 defeat at their hands a fortnight ago. But as I said, with Radonikus out, the situation should be made easier for them. Kevin Hastings leads the Eastern Suburbs side as we look down the team for you now. And you'll find Eastern Suburbs represented by the talented Marty Gurr at fullback. And uh, the useful Steve Sittenham comes into the centres today and he replaces John uh, Byrne, who's out injured. David Michael is back in the top grade. Kevin Hastings leads the side and they're coached, of course, by Bobby Fulton. And so the Newtown side, without Tom Radonikus, it's a bit like an apple without a core, I suppose you could say. Let's hope that they can turn it on tonight like they have been over the last month since they came here to Leichhardt and defeated Manly. There's their side rolling through for you with Graham O'Grady back to fullback for tonight's match. And Ken Wilson leads the side from 5-8 and Larry Brigginshaw is the half in his first number one game for the Newtown side and he'll be looking for a big one for coach Warren Ryan and his selectors. We'll take a break. The match is being refereed by Greg Hartley standing in for Kevin Roberts and we'll be back with the action in just a moment. Man in the centre with the whistle tonight as I said is Greg Hartley and Eastern Suburbs will run left to right and Barry Andrews is to kick off to open this match. Now obviously there's been a complaint about the ball. Andrews saying to Greg Hartley, I don't like the look of this, why don't we try another? Keith Barnes, Larry Brigginshaw, he's got a very big pair of shoes to fill out there tonight uh, in the role of Tom Rodonikus in this Newtown side. Yes, well, certainly in his favour, of course, in Newtown's favour, is that uh, Brigginshaw is in a similar mould to Rodonikus. Uh, he gets to a tremendous amount of work in a long deluxe in defence. He is very experienced, of course, having represented Queensland against New South Wales last year and played very well in several matches last year. Uh, whether he has the uh, the ability to concentrate in his own game and inspire the rest of his teammates the way Vodonica does, well, that remains to be seen. But I'd say they certainly miss Vodonica. So Newtown are in possession after the kickoff. They're just inside the 32-metre line. And it's Brigginshaw serving it up to Bill Noonan, who's back after a very lengthy suspension. And he'll play it back to an underrated hooker in the shape of Barry Jensen. They work it out to the left for Newtown, that is, and Ken Wilson puts the kick in. He was spelled a fraction late by Mel Connor for Eastern Suburbs. And this is Marty Gurr. He had a top game on Saturday against Canterbury. Brilliant performance. Gave the last pass on two occasions. Scored one himself. To play the ball is David Michael. A very fast wing three-quarter. Kevin Hastings. Andrews. And now that's Gary Metcalf taking it up about uh, 10 metres out from his own 22-way line. Now Connor is the dummy half, to the dummy on the blind side, and now it comes back to Mossman. And he's pulled down by Jensen, number 12. As the ball is played, it's gone back to Hastings, who leads this uh, Eastern Suburbs side tonight. And a well-placed kick over the head of uh, Ken Wilson, and well to the left of Graham O'Grady. Wilson is taken immediately by Ian Schubert and by Steve Sidman, the red-headed centre tonight in, uh, in the side in place of the very experienced John Byrne and the five for Newtown well losing the ball but it's a penalty it was stolen by Ian Schubert according to referee Greg Hartley I tend to agree with the referee and uh, the young man Ogilvy gets the penalty for Newtown Graham Hughes is with us tonight always a pleasure to have him on the commentary team Eastern Suburbs scored a stunning win over your side last Saturday Graham can you see them doing that to Newtown tonight and what? continuing during the season 
Well, I, I certainly uh, think they would get up tonight if they play they would, they do, the way they did against us last Saturday, but uh, I can't help but feel that they'll miss uh, two of their big stars from the weekend, John Harvey and Roy Davis, especially against an enthusiastic new downside uh, where they're spent at the moment is in their forwards. So Eastern Suburbs stand in the straight line of defence, waiting for Newtown to take the tap after a, a small delay. And Jim Walters is tackled on the halfway mark, around the legs by Des O'Reilly and over the top by Gary Medcalf, played back to Jensen. Now to Brigginshaw. Wilson pops it up, a short ball. And uh, that's Michael Pittman, who came from Newcastle to join Newtown this year. Playing it back to Jensen, working to the right, and that's John Mackay, who played with Eastern Suburbs up until this year. Dummy half is Barry Jensen. Brigginshaw working as a pivot, so too is Wilson, giving a good ball to uh, the second row forward, Walters for Newtown. Ten metres now, onto the eastern suburb side of the halfway. Wilson, and Ken Wilson grub kicks for touch, he hasn't found it. Ooh, gee, that must have been very close, Marty Gurr almost putting a foot on the touch line. He's met by Brigginshaw and forced back in combination with Michael Ryan. Played just outside the quarterway line, eastern suburbs into the field. Schubert, ooh, jogging tackle, it was a big clash of bodies, Bill Noonan and Ian Schubert. As the penalty goes to East, it's against Newtown. Just getting off the man tackle. These two sides look uh, very evenly matched to me, and I think the tactics are going to be pretty similar too. I think you're going to find that uh, Hastings and uh, Kenny Wilson from the respective sides are going to be doing a fair amount of kicking, looking to play the game down in the, uh, their opposition territory. And I think both of them will be relying mainly through their big uh, pack forwards today. He's something of a cup specialist, isn't he, Kenny Wilson? Mm -hmm. He always seems to pull out something big in these sorts of games, and as is uh, Graham O'Grady from fullback. This is Michael Mossman, killed on the halfway, tries to slide the pass. He had time to do it. He left his arms um, free, but as you can see, some suburbs luckily have come out on the right side of the ledger. This is John Tobin, who had uh, a very big game. Brisbane people will remember at Lang Park in the opening match against your side, Brisbane. Now Mel Connor tackled, just inside touch, about five metres on the Newtown side of the halfway. Schubert is the dummy half, across to Hastings, and now to Andrews. And another big tackle by Noonan. Ball and all. Barry Andrews feeling the full brunt of that tackle from Bill Noonan. Gary Metcalf had a strong game on Saturday, getting the ball down. Lost the head by uh, John Tobin, picked up by Wilson, given away immediately to Ogilvy, who came from Canterbury to Newtown, and tackled by Hastings. Dummy half is Hedrington. This is Michael Pittman. Hastings again the tackle. Jensen. Brigginshaw. Mackay. Metcalf up the top. Tobin around the midsection and Mal Connor down below. Wilson. O'Grady coming in from fullback. He's over the halfway mark. Floats the ball back on the inside. Well done. Back through the top forward to Ogilvy and back to Brigginshaw. Brigginshaw is tackled just outside the 22. Good work there by Graham O'Grady. Ken Wilson serving up the original pass though. Brigginshaw getting up gingerly to O'Grady. Wilson coming on the burst now was Mike Ryan. Knocked down by Eastern Suburbs. Noel Cleal held when not in possession and that's a rightful penalty to Eastern Suburbs. Very enterprising play by Newtown though, particularly the way uh, Grady chimed into the back line and Brigginshaw positioned himself well, didn't he, to, uh, to get up to take the final pass. It was probably unfortunate for Newtown that Brigginshaw was injured in the tackle because otherwise he would have been up quickly and uh, could have had uh, the Eastern Suburbs defence stretched on that right-hand side of the field. Well, they look sharp, you down, Chief, but, and uh, as we're talking about Kenny Wilson, all their play so far is uh, stem from that man. So the free kick, the free place kick taken. Penalty to East, inside the 10 against the Blues. Get back, get out of it, he says. This is certainly well within Andrews' range, although he had a bad day on uh, with the boot against Canterbury, Graham. But, uh, of course, Thank God week, he did. <laughs> week to week, it's a different proposition, isn't it? And uh, who's to say that he's not... Uh, Going to have the kicking boot on tonight. It's a surprising decision not going for the goal. Barry Andrews joined Eastern Suburbs at the last moment this year. He's fully occupied these days as a pro footballer. Not taking the kick for, for goal, but taking it for touch. Yeah. And now the free place kick. 12 metres out by Connor to O'Reilly, the dummy, and blindside to Hastings. Flung to the ground by Pittman. Mackay coming in to lend a hand. East onto the attack. On the 22 is Andrew. Back over that line to Mossman and picked up by Cleo, the big man from the bush. Shearer, come failure, come pro footballer. Played back to Mossman. He's up towards the quarterway line. 
tackled by Wilson over the top. That's Craig Gillis, number 13. He had a part in that uh, attacking raid earlier on. Hastings running as the foil. Mid -car. Towards the 10-meter line, but uh, pulled down by Ken Wilson's bootlace tackle. Away from dummy half goes Des O'Reilly. He tackled about five meters out from the line. Noonan, one of the tacklers again. So was Clay Gillis. He's gone to the attack on the last. The left foot bombed by Hastings. He did well to get that kick in. They fly for it, and coming down with it miraculously was Michael Ryan, saving it for Newtown. O'Grady takes it away. Hastings did well to get that left foot bomb in, Graham. He certainly did, and with pinpoint accuracy, sir. Noonan now. Kevin Hastings is probably the never-say-die player in this eastern suburb side. He just, he's a bit like, well, in a lot of ways, uh, Tommy Radonikas, he sounds. Would you agree with that comment? Oh, yes, certainly. He's uh, been a wonderful asset to eastern suburbs over the last couple of seasons, and uh, he had a top-rate performance on Saturday. But I just feel that the player that eastern going to miss possibly more than the ones that Graham mentioned is Johnny Lane, with the way he was able to work things around the back. Mackay with a big burst up over the 22, 30 metres out from the line. Yes, Keith, uh, Lang had a big game on Saturday. Wilson with the grub kick, left footer. Marty Girl across in cover and just inside the touch line, this talented young fullback takes it back into the Newtown side of play. Lang must be really breathing down the, uh, the neck of George Caponis now for the number one spot as Australian hooker after Saturday in particular. Uh, Keith Barnes, I should ask you that question. Certainly, I couldn't ask it of Graham Hughes. No, well, I think he's been a player that's uh, been underrated now for the last few seasons. And uh, certainly, as far as uh, Sydney fans are concerned, I don't think they've realised the abilities that he has. And uh, just because he's come from Queensland, I think he's been uh, overlooked somewhat. Uh, but his performance uh, in Sydney has been first class. And, I mean, we've seen him play in matches in Queensland and also in interstate games. And he is a top-class hooker. This is John Tobin playing the ball. That's the halfway line just in front of them, as you just saw. And Andrew's kicking for Tuck, and that's going to find it. And that's going to put a scrum down about 15 metres out from the Newtown line. You're watching the 1982 Cup on Network 10 Sport in New South Wales and through Channel O in Brisbane to associate stations in both states. Barry Andrews on camera. It's interesting, see, for doing the golf kicker. I wouldn't have done Barry Andrews' his confidence any good not taking that first shot, especially after the way he kicked last Saturday. No, it's uh, certainly a bit surprising that he didn't, because that's a good position to get that to kick a fair way out, and uh, of course he's got tremendous power. Distance wouldn't have been any problem. Well, now of course he's in a position where uh, distance is, uh, is no query whatsoever. It's all accuracy from here, but, uh, you know, it's not an easy kick, and I think when you're in a bad streak, it's, uh, you don't want the real easy one early in, uh, early in the game. That's why I think he would have been... Uh, champion the bit to uh, take that first penalty. Yes, I guess so. Barry Andrews came to Sydney football as a junior from Mittagong in Group 6. Had nine seasons with Cronulla, gave them good service from 71 to 80. And uh, <coughs> he joined East this, uh, this season and played 125 games in first grade with the Sharks scoring 655 points. Bless you, he said, as Andrews moves back to take this kick for goal. Right on the 22. Ten metres in from touch, and he's hit it per beautifully. Perfect. Two points. And that will have done Barry Andrews and Eastern Suburbs the world of good. They kicked out of ten attempts on Saturday, one goal. And Barry had eight of those attempts at goal on Saturday. So you can imagine how his confidence would be on a downer. But out of those eight kicks, there wasn't one that left his boots uh, in the same fashion as that one. So Eastern Suburbs grabbed the lead, two points to nil. They are the cup, uh, well, they, they recognise as the cup champions. They've won it twice in its history since 1974. A great night football side. Good cup team. And Ken Wilson restarts for Newtown. To John Tobin. Marty Gurr retaliates immediately. Knocked down by Bill Noonan. Penalty to Newtown. That's against Barry Andrews. He's inside the five. Hartley's uh, spot on. And Wilson will find touch over on the scoreboard side, I would imagine, with no wind assistance to speak of. A kick out there towards the his cup sign on the left of the ground or on Wilson's right and he finds it seven metres into each territory. 2-0 in favour of the 
Roosters. Jensen, midway between the 22 and the halfway. Axe is dummy half to Brigginshaw. This is when he didn't pass that ball to Walters. Walters had, uh, had gone. Jensen again. And work blindside, but uh, he's arrested there by Noel Connor and John Tobin. Dummy half Michael Pittman. And they continue to work for the blind as Noonan serves it back inside to Walters. And Jensen again moves to acting half. Gains a valuable five or six metres. They play at ten metres out from the 22. They're just onto their last tackle now as Wilson puts it high. And coming in is uh, Marty Gurr. He was uh, actually obstructed by his own wing three quarter, David Michael. It's a penalty to Newtown. I must admit I didn't see Hartley's ruling. Was it offside? Yes, offside. I think as far as Gurr and, um, and Michael, they both went up together for the ball, and uh, that's the only decision I could uh, imagine Hartley giving. Well, this man taking the attempt at penalty is Ken Wilson. His record this year speaks for itself as a goal kicker. He's now in his 10th season in Sydney Rugby League. He scored 1,507 points in his 10 seasons at an average of 150 a season. And the second leading point scorer in Sydney was 60 points from one try and 28 goals, one drop goal. He's kicked 28 goals from 37 attempts for a 70% record. I think fair to say the most accurate of Sydney goal kickers is Ken Wilson. Just inside the 22, he'd be about 10 metres off centre. Looking to square the situation, they haven't moved the touch judges. That's a two-pointer. And the scoreline is 2-all in the Tooth Cup between East and Newtown. 14 minutes gone, first quarter. Warren Ryan and Tom Radonica sitting shoulder to shoulder. As they watch this, this uh, side without the little master in battle against Eastern Suburbs. Andrews restart. Coming it down to the lock forward Pittman. And we welcome in again our New Zealand audience through TV1. In New Zealand, as Walters, the Newtown second rower, is tackled by Desiree. Wilson, Noonan. Jensen is the dummy half. Pittman getting himself involved. Built very close to the ground and Picked that up well too, he came on the burst and it was a little bit low the pass from Big and Shaw, I thought. Wilson, across Noonan to Walters. That man on the far wing is Chris Doyle. Walters is the dummy half. Wilson gets the kick in, that could be a bit deep, it is. And the sun will go down just outside the Newtown 22. Two points all. to the Roosters. He may have given a signal. If he did, it was on the other side of the scrum. Graham O'Grady uh, Gra makes the inquiry of referee Hartley as Andrew says, I'll take the kick for goal. I'm a little bit confused with O'Grady. Uh, he was out on the field uh, in a la Tom Radonica style with the team around him in uh, a circle form and he was laying down the law, ging them up, striking them up as you like. The captain in the program is Ken Wilson. But that man, Graham O'Grady, he virtually hasn't stopped talking since he got out there, and you might have seen him come up and ask the question of Greg Hartley, what was all that about? Uh, which tends to make me think that maybe O'Grady's taken the, the captaincy over, although he didn't leave the side out, did he? No, the only person entitled to question the referee, of course, or to ask the referee's decision is the captain. Andrews now, 15 metres in from touch on the scoreboard side. One from one. Hits it, he's hooked at a fraction, and it's just to the left of the uprights as he looked at them. So two points all, four minutes of the first quarter remaining. Wilson taking the drop. 
shooting it low. Going down towards David Michael. Now, we might see a flash of this man's speed, but no, such is not to be the case. As Jensen puts him down with Bill Noonan, 10 metres short of the halfway. Playing the ball back. And from Mal Connor with, with the Eastern Suburbs second row, Adeso Riley. Apart from that one break by Metcalf, Graham, this uh, New Town defence is pretty well organised so far. I was going to say, Keith, that it's pretty tight all around. Uh, both sides are moving up very quickly and they look good in two and three tacklers are hitting each man. This is Mossman. Back to Sydenham, the centre three quarter. But as you say, I think uh, East will uh, miss Johnny Lang in and around the ruck. Hastings leading the side tonight through Warnicke back to Sydenham. A short ball to Andrews. Did well to take it. Walters makes the tackle with Brigginshaw and they've lost ground Eastern Suburbs. Hastings gets the left foot kick in and that's stopping pretty quickly. Ogilvy's back for it for the Blues. O'Grady's with him. But Ogilvy takes Sydenham and Schubert on. The player 10 metres short of the halfway mark. Inside the two minute marker coming up to court of time. O'Grady taken around the legs by O'Reilly who plays 80 minutes of non-stop football. Jensen is the dummy half. Brigginshaw. Pittman. I like the way he's moving tonight, Michael Pittman. He's coming onto it with great zest and uh, he's giving Eastern Suburbs a few headaches. Wilson, a short ball to Walters. It must have been very close to offside. Walters plays the ball to Brigginshaw. It's out through Jensen. And a short one to Craig Ellis. The tackler and a good tackle from Gary Metcalf. Blindside. Wilson. Ogilvy stepping off the left foot and giving it back to O'Grady. And five metres on the east side of halfway, the scrum will pack. Tight start to uh, the second round cup encounter. The winning side will go into the quarterfinals. The losers would not necessarily be out of contention. They could still make the quarterfinal berth with one win, one loss, providing their points for and against are sufficiently great enough to get them into the vacant spot. Hastings speaking. Andrews has put it down. Picked up by Mike Ryan. Advantage allowed to apply. A brig and jaw back to Pittman. Newtown with about 60 seconds to attack him. It goes across to O'Grady, turns it on the inside to Mackay, and he's hit in a jolting tackle there by Sydenham. And also by Mel Connor. Ball being played back to Jensen, called for by Walters, number 10. He's three or four metres out from the 22. Again, Medcalf makes a head-on tackle. Jensen has his arm firmly tied to his chest by Mel Connor. And we're only seconds away from quarter time. Brigginshaw shows it, tries to split them, and is tackled by Mossman. And this is the last tackle for the Blues. Back to Wilson, given away to Brian Hetherington. And he's put down at the end of the first 20 minutes. And Newtown and Eastern Suburbs lock together at two points all. About quarter time in this second round two cup match, the first second round match of 1980 between East and Newtown. They're two points all after 20 minutes of football. Incidentally, the scrums at quarter time uh, in favour of Eastern Suburbs, 1-0 and the penalties in favour of Eastern Suburbs, 5-3. Eastern Suburbs have held the ball for six tackles on five occasions and Newtown on four occasions. So the handling by both sides in the first 20 minutes, quite good. Now the Golden Prize for 1980, as is uh, the case uh, normally, will win for the player a great prize. It's the Volvo 242 GT Sports. It was won last year by Rocky Laurie. This year it might be won by John Rebo as we show you the try. Uh, scored by Western Suburbs last week. Duggan. Lighting through Duggan. I was told to watch him, and I tell you what, he might be worth watching. He's given the pass on the outside to Evans. Back to Rawls. They've got to score. If they run out of speed, they've run out of room to work in, but this will still be a try. Yes, it's come off an Aucklander, and Greg Hartley has ruled a fair try, and that's a right ruling, too. Yes, I think John Rebo would agree with me that he wouldn't be the player nominated in that case. It would be more than likely young Duggan, Peter Duggan, who had a superb game, I thought, for Western Suburbs last Wednesday night. OK, let's have a look at this magnificent prize, the Volvo from Tynan Motors. Steve Rogers to tell you all about it. This year's Golden Prize Award is certainly going to be worth winning with a prize like this. Fabulous Tynan Volvo 242 GT. I'll bet a lot of boys out there will be out to win this one. 242 GT Volvo has legendary dynamic safety, 
four-wheel disc brakes, fuel-injected motor, four-speed manual with overdrive that can reduce fuel consumption by up to 10%, and alloy rims with advanced design special tyres. This year's Golden Tire Award is certainly going to be worth winning, thanks to the team at China and Volvo. China Motors, Volvo, Steve Rogers. And uh, that's a good treble, let me tell you. Here's a bloke down on the sideline now, Keith Barnes. They called him Golden Boots at one stage, and he's with another top-line footballer, Tommy Rodonica. Yes, thanks, Ray. Well, uh, Tommy, of course, you've been the inspiration and the main reason for Newdale's revival this year. How good are the Jets without Tommy Rodonica? Well, mate, they'll, they'll do fine because they will all prove it out here tonight because uh, they're playing tricky football, and uh, Larry Brigginshaw, he plays for Queensland, and uh, he won't let the side down, and... And Newtown, well, uh, they can depend without myself, Phil Seaworth and Jeff Bugner, as they're proving out here tonight. Yes, the player that's impressed me in that first 20 minutes is uh, young Pittman. He comes onto the ball very strongly. Yeah, he's a tremendous player. Well, see, we were, we were hit with uh, a lot of injuries and suspensions early on in the season. And all these young boys, like, I've got a lot of raps for it. And uh, But you should have a look at all these young boys, what they've done to this side. And also the coach, he's really inspired them. And, uh, and I can tell you something like Jimmy Walters, a red-headed fellow playing in the second row, he was playing hooker in reserve grade and, and he just eats the work up and he's as you can see out here he's going tremendous yes he certainly is well i suppose the tactics are going to be similar for both teams control the ball control the game yeah well, this is right well uh, they won't play it in their their own half they'll kick it out and uh and just play percentage football and then, then the gaps will appear probably in the third quarter which i think is the most vital quarter thanks very much tom well after this break we'll be back for that second quarter we're coming into the second quarter of this cup match between eastern suburbs and newtown with the Scores at two points all. A penalty by this man, Barry Andrews, which was equaled by the Newtown 5 8 and, well, as I said in the first quarter, the advertised skipper for this game, Ken Wilson. Craig Ellis, he's 10 metres out from the 22, tackled by Barry Andrews. Given away to Bill Noonan. Noonan looking for support, finding Mackay. And uh, he's held by Hastings and Warnicky coming in over the top. Now kicked by Wilson. A big one down centre field, sending Marty Gurr across towards David Michael's wing. He gives it immediately to this youngster who joined Eastern Suburbs from Parks this year. He was dropped for last weekend's match and got a reprieve tonight with Kerry Bosted representation duty. <coughs> Sittenham. South Sydney or Eastern Suburbs Junior, the two clubs being married uh, for junior purposes. Mel Connor, up towards halfway, held by Craig Ellis. Played back to Des O'Reilly, away to uh, Gary Metcalf. Dived on by O'Reilly, play on for referee Hartley, and he restarts the six. Mossman, Hastings, Andrews, Hastings, Sydenham. Couple of metres short of the halfway mark. Warnicky did some good things in the first half against Canterbury on Saturday. Playing it back to his captain. The run around back to Hastings. Mossman. Ellis doing the tackling. Got a pass away to Tobin. Picked up by Walters for Newtown as it goes loose. On the halfway mark. O'Grady coming up from fullback. He's uh, in that position tonight after... A uh, terrible injury suffered by Phil Sigsworth, the star Newtown fullback who was knocking on the door of representative honours. And uh, to you, Phil Sigsworth, if you're watching tonight from everybody in rugby league, what more can we say than a speedy recovery and commiseration? Wilson giving it out to Craig Ellis and a bootlace tackle there by Des O'Reilly. Ryan goes himself, Mike Ryan. Back to Brigginshaw. Did well, Brigham Shaw, to get the pass away to Doyle. Sydenham read the play well, didn't he? Then he came in and timed his tackle perfectly. Calling for it is Ken Wilson. That's him. Puts the kick high. He's been filled in the back play, but the three hardly says, Well, here's a chance for Newtown. Ellis takes the ball after Sydenham had dropped it. And they're about 12 metres out from the line as Walters is held there by Schubert. Ball being played back to Craig Ellis. Away to Brigginshaw. O'Grady now strikes the opening, turns it back to Ogilvy. And he's tackled about 12 metres out from the line. Jensen is into dummy half. They still have a few tackles left to go. Picked up by Brigginshaw, given away quickly to Pittman, and he's tackled by Noel Cleal. 
Pittman plays it back to Brigginshaw. Out to Wilson, the run round on the dummy. Wilson goes himself, turns it back to Pittman. Pittman dies, he's in, I think. No, he's not. He's about a foot short of the line. From dummy half goes Wilson. He's held up and forced back now. And referee Hartley says that Dixon will have a scrum. Oh, how close can you go? And Eastern Suburbs say thank goodness for that because they thought they were in on two occasions, Newton. Well, I think Newton looking a lot sharper, too, especially around the uh, the halves. Wilson and Brigginshaw are both looking very sharp indeed, but I thought Kenny Erd there, if he had a thunderball out wide, I think Newton had them all a well and truly cover. And he actually got over the lane, didn't he? But then he was forced back. Very important scrum. Brigginshaw held by the second row forward, Tobin. Taken off him and running away with it now for the Eastern Suburbs side is Mel Connor, the hooker. That's a gain of some 20 metres by Connor. Big valuable uh, amount of ground after being on such a defensive. Marty Gurr. Not a good kick, although if it does go end on end, and it looks like it is, it's no, just inside touch, taken by Doyle. Tobin up in defence, playing in the second row tonight. Playing the number 10, John Tobin. O'Grady. Five metres back onto the eastern suburb side of the halfway. Brigginshaw, Noonan, Walters, away to Jensen, now O'Grady. This is Pittman. No gain in ground, but uh, plenty of ball work. Metcalf and O'Reilly hunting as a pair. Jensen. We'll play the ball back to Michael Pittman. Brigginshaw, switching the point of the attack out to Mackay. Noonan comes up to acting half. Mackay grabs another seven or eight metres. That's the end of six. And the scrum to go down nine metres out from the 22 on the east end of the ground. Two points all, no change since quarter time. Just uh, variation in the Newtown attack with the switching of the attack and uh, the drive in which they're coming onto the ball. Placing a lot of pressure on uh, the Eastern side of the defence out there. Yeah, they're, they're placing Kenny Wilson and, and Brigginshaw on either side of the ruck and uh, they're making you spread their defence. So it's a knock-on against both and he's going to put a scrum down. About 30 metres out from the Eastern Suburbs line. We've got no big game for you in Sydney on Saturday, but we resume with the big game telecast on Saturday week St George will play Eastern Suburbs. Wednesday night we have combined country versus Canterbury as Brigginshaw takes play just inside the 22 line. Walters, Ellis starting to go a bit uh, one out there, Newtown. Ellis would have been looking for quite some time for support. Jensen, they're nine metres out from the line now, the Jets. The dummy half is Brigginshaw. Wilson calling for it on the left, on the right, Noonan, who takes it to Brigginshaw. A long ball, and it's picked up by Mike Ryan, who's held about eight metres out from the line. Played back to Graham O'Grady. Out to Brigginshaw. Now across the face of Wilson, out to Walters. Number 10 for Newtown is Jim Walters. He's away from two tackles. Gets a pass away in the third. Back to Brigginshaw, back to Pittman. And Pittman has held a couple of metres out. That was good work by Jim Walters. I thought Pittman should have let it go. Last tackle coming up for the Blues. It's out to Ken Wilson. Throws the dummy. Goes in. Dummies in. Ken Wilson has scored for Newtown. And the Jets lead by five points to two. That try coming at the eighth minute of the second quarter. See it again on the Tooth Cup replay. Wilson through the dummy and uh, split the defence to score. Head on, it looked like this. Yes, he's certainly a crafty player, Kenny Wilson. That's the second time that, he, that he's thrown the dummy. On each occasion, he's got through the East defence. Surprising, though, Lee, it was the uh, tackle of Kevin Hastings that he beat to uh, eventually cross the line. But uh, it wasn't surprising that Newtown put that try on the board because they've been playing very positive, very purposeful football, controlling the ball well, their handling has been good, their backing up is good, and they're putting a lot of pressure on an East defence that uh, had been particularly safe up until that uh, time when Wilson threw the dummy and made the break. Well, they're running on strong, uh, Newdown Chiefs, and at the moment, I don't think Newdown are, are losing uh, with Larry Brigginshaw out there on the field. Uh, he's lost nothing to Tommy Rodon because he's having a smart game. Yes, he is. He's a good player. There's Larry Brigginshaw on camera now, the 
young Queenslander who must have uh, felt his frustrations in his first season in Sydney League. He was bought by Newtown prior to them signing Rodonicus, and I think if Larry had have had uh, a chance to rethink the situation, he may have uh, chosen to go to another club. But it's back to Ken Wilson now, who's going to take this attempt at conversion of his own try. 23 metres out. 14 metres in from the touch line. He's hooked it. And Newtown continue to lead. Five points to two. Well, the launch of the Buttercup Little League Coaching Clinic being run in conjunction with the Daily Mirror has already led to two fantastic coaching clinics being run this week and with only two remaining can I urge parents of youngsters who want them to learn more about rugby league to get them mm. down to Scarborough Park at Cogra tomorrow and to Parramatta Park on Friday. Now full details are in the Daily Mirror every day and at the clinics young league players can get the benefit of representative and grade players experience and uh, they'll be taught some of the finer points of rugby league sponsored by buttercup bread and run in conjunction with the daily mirror and the paper with whom the channel 10 organization are combining to run for the very first year the daily m award a thirty thousand dollar series which will culminate with a gala function here in sydney telecast night when awards will be given out 26 of them in all and 36 thirty thousand dollars in prize money so it's to come out to the 22 line for the optional restart by Eastern Southern. Looking a little bit tired, eh? I know if they're not moving up as quickly now, they're not putting the man, the man with the ball down. Well, they've been under a lot of pressure for the 10 minutes of this quarter, and uh, obviously they're missing the likes of Alex and uh, Harvey and Lang in that pack, because it's in the pack that uh, most of the damage is being done. Five points to two in favour of Newtown. They defeated Eastern Suburbs a fortnight ago at the sports ground by 22 points to six. Both sides without their stars, Rodonicus and Bugden out of Newtown. For those just joining us from Kerry Boasted and the Queensland uh, partner John Lang out of the Eastern Suburbs side, all four players in the city side for Saturday. Jensen to Brigginshaw. Wilson did well to get the pass away but almost intercepted by Kevin Hastings and it's back in possession for Newtown and the tackle count restart with Brigginshaw playing it. Noonan for Makiwi or should I say Kiwi International Jensen tackled by O'Reilly doesn't do anything flash, does O'Reilly, but I tell you what, he's out there working for 80 minutes. And there's a good ball from Wilson, given perfectly to Pittman, who does well to get it back then to the support of uh, Mark Ogilvy, who tackled 10 metres out from the eastern suburbs, 22. Newtown looking the sharper. Out to Brigginshaw. Wilson. Across to O'Grady. Pops it up quickly to Craig Ellis, who gallops down towards the 22, gives it back to Mackay. And John Mackay is tackled on the fifth, three metres inside the quarter line. Noonan, Brigginshaw, Wilson, Ryan, inside the 22, can he get it away? Oh, over the shoulder of O'Grady, that would have been almost certainly a try. That's the end of the tackle count and the scrum to go down just inside the East 22. It was on Graham Hughes. It certainly was. Uh, Ray, Kenny Wilson's repeatedly put people through gaps here. and I think that Easter the fence is moving up quickly to him but it's the outside man who's not coming in to uh, cut off Wilson's support one of the big problems he's had though is that uh, Wilson has so many supporters uh, support and he's he's plenty of runners, that's yeah. right and uh, he's picking the uh, the person to give the ball to uh, very very well and there's the penalty going to Newtown and uh, Wilson will undoubtedly be kicking, taking another kick for goal. It's against Mel Connor on camera, the Eastern Suburbs hooker. I uh, continue to be quite amazed at the crowds we're getting to the Tooth Cup in 1980. This is no exception tonight. The uh, hill area, and that's the new grandstand area, as we look back towards it, up towards the commentary box, uh, quite heavily housed, let me tell you, or quite heavily occupied. 
Uh, we'll get a wide shot of the hill area on the scoreboard side, and you'll see, no, not that shot, that one there. Uh, for a, <coughs> a May night, a winter's night in Sydney, it's not a bad crowd when the match is actually going to television on a one-hour delay basis. And yet you have people saying that rugby league uh, has lost uh, some of its attraction. Wilson taking this uh, penalty kick for goal. His side leading by five points to two, and we're seven minutes out from half time. Good schoolboys match played earlier here tonight. Tell you about that in a moment as Wilson moves in, hits it. That looks good. Yes, straight over the black dot. Or as I'm reminded, over the black and gold dot here. And Tiger territory. And it's seven points to two in favour of the Jets now. Replay of tonight's Commonwealth Bank Cup is on tomorrow at 7 a.m. And uh, it's between Evans High of Blacktown and Camden High. And on Saturday morning here on Channel 10 at 8.30. And on Channel O in Brisbane, you people up there can see it at 9.30 on uh, Channel O. Graham O'Grady is tackled. He's lost it. Chance for Eastern Suburbs. And that's David Michael taking the play up towards the 22. Held by Jim Walters and by Ogilvy. Out to Warnicky. Across to Sydenham. Now to Andrews. Here's Marty Gurr. Marty Gurr's inside the 22. He's still going. He's been uh, pulled down from behind by Michael Ryan. He took that pass well from Andrews. He was coming for half an hour, Gurr, uh, before he actually hit the line. This is Medcalf taking it up the centre now. Maybe it's time they flung this ball out wide eastern suburbs and probed the uh, extremities of the field. It's with Mossman. He turns it back to Tobin, but he'd lost all momentum when he actually took the pass. Lack of understanding, played by Tobin. And back to Noel Cleal, the big man. Almost 17 stone at him. This is the last tackle. Hastings is the man to watch. There he is, the left foot bomb. It's a bad one. It's off the outside edge of the boot. And uh, it's down to Eastern Suburbs, and the tackle count resumes. That's a costly one for Newtown, off a bad kick by Hastings. It's with Warnicky. He throws the dummy, gets the pass over the top to uh, Sydenham it is. And he's uh, about seven or eight metres inside the 22. Out to Hastings, looking for Andrews, finding him. Turns the ball away to Schubert. Schubert's lost it, picked up by uh, Metcalf, and he's held by the Newtown side. They lost. Probably almost 20 metres in that exchange. Mossman. On the inside. David Michael. Just outside the quarter line. Playing it back to Mal Connor. Now to Hastings. On to Andrews. Step. Gets the pass down to Tobin. He can't take it. Picked up by Brigham Shaw for Newtown. Nowhere near the same amount. Graham Hughes of cohesion in that uh, Eastern Suburbs attack. Well, just watching closely, Ray, uh, in all the two sets of six tackles they had there, there was no real set back line outside uh, Barry Andrews. And the break they did make, they were lucky that Marty Gurr read the play and stormed in. So it's Newtown, three minutes away from half time, leading by seven points to two, as uh, Bill Noonan was tackled a couple of metres short of the 22 line. Good kick, going down very close to the, oh, knocked on by Marty Gurr. And uh, that's a blemish, but his game doesn't need. He's been on a high in recent weeks. I think he was a little unfortunate because he realised that he was so close to the touchline. I think he was very conscious of that. And uh, I got the impression he may have been trying to uh, knock the ball back infield. Yeah, I think his next step was right on the line, so it was, it was finishing on his line. Warnicky, Hastings. Andrews. Well, they've been probing for a good part of the second uh, quarter, but just no gap. The only man that... Uh, Virtually has made a clean break for Eastern Suburbs as their fullback Marty Gurr. David Michael. 
and he's put in the track nine meters on his own side of the halfway. Seven two in favor of Newtown. Pacing speed. Brigham Shaw. That's Pittman. Taken by Gary Warnicky and by Hastings. O'Grady. Came to Newtown this year along with Tom Rodonikas from Western Suburbs. Brigham Shaw. Looked on the inside. Mackay was supposed to be the runner, but he was too late. And this is against Warnicky. That is called uh, a bunch of fives, I think. <laughs> Around the walls and places. And probably Matty Logworth and Biggin Shaw back, back into it. Could be called two fives. <laughs> well, it's certainly been a all new town this quarter, hasn't it? They've uh, taken the initiative, they've uh, controlled the ball better than Eastern Suburbs, and their variation in attack mm. has been much better. Yeah, they, well, one thing they certainly can thank Tommy Radonikas for is, uh, is their defence. Uh, they've got great pride in their defence on a number of occasions tonight. The uh, when in when with the ball, uh, they've driven each back. So Ken Wilson taking this uh, shot for goal. He's uh, been a Newtown lad all along, this uh, boy. He played his junior football with Z. LaSalle College at Marrickville. And that's got height, but I think he's hooked it again. Bringing it out as Hastings for Eastern Suburbs. But there's the half-time siren sounding. Hartley says, thank you very much. I'll just wait for this ball to go to ground. And he's called a halt for the first 40 minutes with Newtown going to Oranges. Leading Eastern Suburbs by seven points to two. So the start of the third quarter with Newtown leading seven points to two. Keith, you've been to the dressing rooms. Any changes? No, there aren't. But uh, plenty of advice from the bad coaches, of course. Um, Bobby Fulton, critical of, uh, of East's uh, inability to control the ball in that first half. And, uh, of course, thereby they weren't able to uh, place the amount of pressure on the east on the uh, newtown attack and kenny wilson in particular uh, that bobby fulton would have liked but uh, newtown on the other hand quite content with their performance in the first half looking to spin the ball out wide and uh continue to turn and bring these big forwards into the attack running off kenny wilson and uh, with short passes close to the ruck um this third quarter should be a very interesting one from both sides with each of, of course desperate now to get back into the game noonan giving that pass down to Larry Brigginshaw and Wilson Mackay correction Pittman and dived on by Craig Ellis referee Hartley saying the ball went forward it's not feeding on that loose ball to the same extent that Newtown are they? no throughout the night you know controlled a lot better not dropping it as much but uh, we had the chance there to gain position so Brigham Shaw asked to play the ball on the halfway. Pittman, legs taken from under him by Gary Warnicky. Brigham Shaw, that's Mackay. Brigham Shaw, and taken to ground, Brian Hedson. Ogilvy, played with Canterbury prior to joining Newtown. Wilson. Grubbs for the touchline on the scoreboard side finds it as nine times out of ten he does ten meters out from the 22. we're on the newtown end of the field newtown leading by seven points to two and the ground advertising there from the tiger sponsor avis as larry brigginshaw shrugs off a would-be tackle Jim Walters, one of the Radonicus disciples, I think we could call him. Noonan will play it back to Barry Jensen. Well, there's a scrappy play the ball. It's with Wilson. Get him back. Oh, that's a bit high. Referee Hartley said, I've seen it. It's across his chest. 
at the part of the chest. Brigginshaw. And this is the last. Wilson is the man who will call for it. Serves it on the inside of O'Grady. It's been put down by East. This will be a resumption of the six. It is. Indication clearly given by Greg Hartley. Brigginshaw. And Des O'Reilly and John Tobin make the tackle. Noonan. That's the 22 line you can see on the eastern suburbs end of the field. I think I referred to it as the Newtown end of the field a few minutes back. Newtown have been camped in East Territory for a few minutes now since the start of the third quarter. Last tackle, picked up by Mike Ryan, and a scrum will go down at the end of six. This directed pass there, I think Wilson was looking for it, wasn't he? It's a scrappy start to the second half, mm -hmm. uh, Keith, but uh, the defence of those sides has been so strong on the night that it's forced all these errors, I think. Well, I think he's probably a little bit more conscious now of uh, Wilson's ability with the ball, and they're moving him very quickly out wide looking to chop off that pass, just as long as Andrews doesn't get up too quick. That's right. Well, there's Peter across the scrum. Penalty to Newtown. Wilson will take the kick for goal. He's right in front. About 37 metres out. He's indicated he's taking the kick, has he? Yes. Following City versus Country on Saturday at the cricket ground, the combined countryside will then enter the 1982 Cup against Graham Hughes, uh, against your side, Canterbury Bankstown, here at Leichhardt next week. Kim Wilson builds his mound. Big match on Sunday between Manly and Parramatta. One of several good games on over the weekend. The other one I mentioned during the halftime break, Canterbury and St. George. There's the head-on shot, the head-on camera. Showing you what it looks like from a bird's eye view behind the upright. Staying with it as he hits it, and it's inside the upright, and it's two points, and Newtown lead by nine points to two. Five minutes gone, third quarter. Three from five now for Ken Wilson. Incidentally, we've checked out the captaincy of Newtown. One can do no more than go by his program. Ken Wilson, that man on camera, was listed in the program as captain. Uh, but we've been assured by referee Greg Hartley that the coin to decide uh, from which end a side would defend in the first half was tossed by Graham O'Grady, this man. Mackay. Noonan. Brigginshaw calling for it. Jensen struggling five metres further upfield and playing it back to Bill Noonan. Wilson kicking between Marty Gurr and Ian Schubert. And it's Gurr to play it 12 metres out from his 22 back to Schubert. Put down by John Mackay. Hastings, Medcalf on the burst. Saturday's Eastern Suburbs performance was highlighted, I felt, by the big performances of men like Medcalf, Harvey, and Ayliff, with the latter two not out there tonight. They're out injured. Hastings. Little chip, probably unnecessary because he was through the gap taken by Wilson. I don't think Kevin Hastings realised, but he was actually through the opening and then he chipped it. Yes, he was. I think he'd uh, made up his mind beforehand that he was going to chip over the top, went to the lane, and then the lane opened up for him. And uh, as you say, he was actually, he'd actually made the break. Chipman, that's the halfway line. 
Grady on the blind side of play, taken by Andrews and Sydenham. Brighamshaw, Clay Gillis, playing it back to Walters. Brighamshaw, Wilson, and that man is Mike Ryan. Still going towards the 22, and tackled by C. Sydenham. Couldn't get the ball over the head of uh, David Michael. And uh, this scrum is forming nine metres out from the 22. That's one thing uh, Eastern Suburbs haven't done this evening, and that is throw the ball out wide. They've been uh, concentrating and just hanging it up the middle of the line upon their forwards all night. Clean heel to Newtown. Pittman. Wilson, O'Grady, still just outside the quarter, held by Hastings, played back to Ryan. Wilson, Noonan, now Brigham Shaw. Tackler was Des O'Reilly. This is the last. Wilson will kick here probably. No, he switches the point of the attack over to Bill Noonan. Gets a long ball out to Chris Doyle. Doyle is taken by Michael. And uh, the scrum packing just outside the eastern suburb 22. The scrum's at this stage, Newtown 6-1. So Mal Connor obviously has got his uh, problems out there against Barry Jensen. Again, a clean heel. Brigham Shaw around the open side. I think that's the feature, though, that uh, he is uh, hooking that ball so clean. He's coming out very quickly. The Grady. Mackay. Walters wants it. That's him. Looking to turn it. Now O'Grady again. 11 metres out. This is the last tackle. Newtown setting it up. Right back for the drop goal. It's, it's good from here. Yes, it's a, a one-pointer to Ken Wilson. A drop goal. Takes to a lead now of 10 points to 2. And the 10 points to Wilson, of course, with his uh, three goals, a try and a field goal. He's certainly had a very important bearing on this match, hasn't he? Yes. Playing well behind the line, positioned himself well. He certainly has. People uh, tend to increase or underrate him with his general playing ability as well. I think they more or less see him as a, as, a, as, a solely as a kicker, but it's mainly been his passes that put Newtown through uh, gaps all night. This man is Pittman, tackler Metcalf, and players just inside the Newtown 22. Mackay. Walters calling for it. Ellis runs with it. And 13 tackle by 13. Metcalf the tackler. He's warming up on the sideline, Ken Wright. The former rugby union international. This will be an interesting uh, Which, That's, that's against the attacking side being inside the five, which is uh, oh. some, something you don't see very much of. That's an interesting one, Ray. I suppose uh, throughout a match, uh, the referee really wanted to carry on with that ruling. Really, he could do, he could penalise the attacking side a hundred times. Well, that's the first time I think I've seen it in 1980. The attacking side inside the five. And when you stop and think about it, if you're trying to keep the two sides 10 metres apart, there's only one way to do it, and that's to apply the same rule to the attacking side as you do to the defending side. Yes, it's certainly not to their advantage, though, is it, to get inside the five? Yeah, it is a pretty harsh penalty <laughs> uh, when the only person disadvantageous to is the new down side. So, Andrews. right in front and he's kicked it so the 
Difference now six points. Newtown ten, Eastern Suburbs four. Billy Andrews, affectionately known as Panda, kicked the goal and he's been replaced. Yeah. So nice how do you do? So Ken Wright is on for Eastern Suburbs in number 15, Rugby Union International. And Marty Gurr gives it to Ian Schubert, who's across the 22-way line. Tuckler, Bill Noonan with Larry Brigginshaw, Hastings, Tobin. And Wright's an interesting player too, because he can certainly inject a lot of attack into, into this Eastern Suburbs back line. Hastings, very strictly player. This is Creole, taking it away from the touch line. Pretty hard man to stop. He scored a spectacular try on Saturday. Sydenham, well taken. Warnocky, stepping, trying to find the opening. But they had the chance to open it up then, Graham. Yeah, and they've lost ground yet again, Chase. Hastings kicking in desperation, and he's found it. A good kick by Kevin Hastings, finding it five metres out from the Newtown 22. I wouldn't exactly say it was in desperation then. I think uh, he realised that there was a big open space there and uh, there was the opportunity of gaining plenty of yardage. And, uh, now, of course, it's up to the hooker to, uh, to back him up and get that ball. Well, Bobby Fulton has got uh, Kevin Stevens on the bench. Uh, as they win a scrum Eastern Suburbs and it's gone through Warnocky to Ken Wright and he's uh, tackled a few metres out from the 22. He's very fast, Ken Wright. Newtown will not want to let him see any open space. Warnocky, Medcalf, lurking out wide. And into dummy half goes Mel Connor. East has their entire team to the right of that play the ball. It's through uh, Marty Gurr to Cleo and uh, he's held about five metres out from the 22. Hastings. And that's uh, Michael, the wing three-quarter. Hastings switching the point of the attack to Warnicky. Warnicky tackled on the 22 by Mackay. Walters over the top in 10. Back to Kevin Hastings for the bomb. Coming fast as Sidman. They fly for it. It's an eastern suburb ball and Hastings has scored. Has he yet? Wow, what a try. <laughs> Talk about... Uh, Seizing the opportunity while it exists. And uh, Greg Hartley, he's done a touch of the light. Fantastic staying in touch with this play. But there's the bomb. Now let's watch it. Newtown players fly for it. In fact, two of them. It comes down and off Cleo. And appeared from that to go behind him into the waiting arms of Hastings. Ogilvy was hanging on to an upright as he tried to make a tackle with one hand and uh, Hartley has to hurdle him in the process. Now here it is again on the head-on. It's when it comes in contact with Cleo, he's deflected it appeared behind him. And uh, <coughs> what that Ogilvy was doing hanging on to the upright, I haven't yeah, got but a that's clue. what surprised me was uh, Kevin Hastings coming back into the field to play after being practically over the line to get underneath the post. He certainly did it the hard way, but I, I can't agree with you. Though. I thought that uh, the ball was not forward. Knocked the ball forward. I think, I think the ball did go forward. Yeah. Do you think so? I think it did, yeah. We, we are on a hard angle, but I, I feel that to run onto the ball the way Hastings did, it would have had to be knocked forward off the uh, field. Well, you're watching it from the same angle as that camera that uh, took the picture for you. Um, I, I must disagree with you. I thought that uh, it was a fair try. We'll settle it out the right. Hartley was right on the oh, spot and well, well, completely opened up the game. I quite obviously disagree with Now you. let's have a look and see if... Um, here's a, here's a, a penalty straight away to Eastern Suburbs, who trail now by only one point. Greg Hartley ruled incidentally in that uh, try that uh, six tackles should recommence. That was... Uh, that's exactly what he had to do. It came off a Newtown player. But that's not the point uh, that Graham Hughes is disagreeing on. He believes it came off Cleo, went in a forward direction to Hastings. So it's Hastings to right. Cleo. Now Warnicky. They're moving just the incentive they needed. To his right. 
well taken but referee Hartley has now penalized East for a deliberate forward pass from Hastings to Ken Wright well I had a pretty good view of that and I doubt that that was forward <laughs> I was just gonna agree with Hartley were you? <laughs> strike me around you are giving it to me tonight Graham I'm gonna call it a good decision I got a funny feeling you're barracking for the Jets here now they've found touch 10 meters on the eastern suburb side of halfway the free kick taken by uh, Ogilvy and a penalty for being inside the 10 against East just let me know if you want to be the adjudicator between you two <laughs> I know which way you'll go <laughs> Ken Wilson's going to take a kick for goal uh, from 31 meters out he's uh, just off center All right, there's the shot as far as length is concerned. He's practically on centre. We might be able to give you an end-on-end -end shot. Just to show you the actual angle. And there it is. It's probably further off centre than I first imagined. About 10 metres off it. 10-9, that's an important kick. Hits it. And it's no goal. Oh, gee, Ooh. East have made a mess of it in the in-goal area. Um, David Michael it was, who flew spectacularly through the air, but he did nothing more than almost create problems for Kevin Hastings to bring it into the field of play. Being played by Noel Cleo. And O'Reilly takes it out. Very yeah. close to three quarter time. In fact, the siren should be about to sound. As Medcalf is held, there goes the three quarter time siren with Newtown just losing uh, their apparent stranglehold on the game. They're in front by one point, ten points to nine with 20 minutes to go. So the final quarter coming up. And uh, a very interesting quarter it's going to be. With Greg Lane on in the Eastern Suburbs lineup. And that's him making an unfortunate mistake in the opening seconds of the final quarter. Incidentally, I must admit I didn't know or didn't think that um, Newtown or East had won so many scrums in the latter part of that third quarter. In fact, the statistics I got were written around the wrong way, and the scrums still favour Newtown 7-2 at three-quarter time. The penalties favour Newtown 8-7. I just uh, wanted to correct that because I think I made it uh, sound as though Eastern Suburbs had won quite a few scrums in the latter part of the third quarter. So it's uh, Mel Connor to Metcalf. Now, Lane is on in 14 he's a, a halfback 5 8 uh, to the best of my knowledge but Kevin Hastings is still out there so it's quite likely that I'm only supposing that Hastings may have gone into lock forward he has huh okay so Hastings takes this kick uh, to clear it out of his own quarter and Doyle is back there for Newtown Sydenham goes in to make the tackle and he's made that tackle secure 22 year old center three quarter And this is Ogilvy, the other winger from the uh, left of the field, coming across, making himself useful. As Pittman takes it up towards the halfway. 12 metres short, in fact. Out to Brigginshaw, away to Mackay. And uh, he's held there by Connor in combination with uh, Kevin Hastings. Jensen, Brigginshaw, Wilson. A long ball and a good ball out to Hetherington, but that's an equally good tackle. From Ian Schubert and Steve Sidman. Ball being played back to Mike Ryan. Wilson grubbing for uh, extra ground and the fine touch. 15 metres on the uh, eastern suburb side of the halfway. Never kick that too because he's under a lot of pressure and then no yard is in which to work. He's very close to the touchline. Possession are very important for eastern suburbs, isn't it? 
I tell you what is uh, proving at the moment very important for Newtown, that drop goal by Ken Wilson. I think there'll be another one on its way too if they get within shooting distance. I think so. Brigham Shaw. O'Grady. Well, actually, I suppose from Newtown's point of view, two points clear would be very handy. Thank you very much. Because with their points for and against, they finish with uh, a win and a draw, and uh, their points for and against would read quite handsomely with that uh, fairly big win against Manly. Walters inside the 22. Jensen to dummy half, calling for it as O'Grady on one side, Wilson on the other. Wilson puts it up. It's a high bomb, putting uh, under pressure Marty Gurr. He hasn't got it, and it's uh, John Mackay, tackled by Sydenham. And that's the end of six. And the scrum is to pack down about nine metres out from the east line. An important report from the, um, from the uh, touch judge here, too. Walters coming over to the scrum. Instead of getting a caution. And I can see a replacement for Eastern Suburbs uh, preparing to come out. I refer to Kevin Stevens, who from memory won the National Le Electronic Sales and Rentals Man of the Match in Brisbane. So he must have been on a toboggan since then. I watched him closely on Saturday, Ray, had a fine game in the second. And East penalty, <laughs> failing to retire against Brigham Shaw. The replacement is made, and uh, Mal Connor, the hooker, has been replaced by Kevin Stevens. Yeah, that's a gamble, isn't it? Well, not when you look at the scrum count. It's not uh, Keith. No, but, uh, I mean, he did get a couple of scrums, I think, late in that third quarter, and uh, there hasn't been anything in this particular final quarter. This guy's got a fair... Stevens did come in with a fairly good record, didn't he? He did, indeed, and he's got a, he's got a fair few uh, bullets in his belt, Kevin Stevens, who can change the trend of a game with his own... Natural ability. Mossman. Hastings. Stevens. Marty Gurr. He's only just got that ball. Tackler was Mike Ryan. Dummy half is John Tobin. That's Lane. Right. Cleo. Spin the ball ball. And Big Cleo stands and sees Ken Wright sail by, unable to get the pass away. Hastings. Left foot kick in general play. Sending O'Grady across on a chase, and ah, oh, gee, he's got that ball just in time, O'Grady. Outside his 22. Oh, and he bumps off Ken Wright. And play is going to be when O'Grady plays it eight metres out from his 22. Ogilvy. Mackay, 10 metres out from the 22. Brigginshaw, Wilson, across Noonan, out for Doyle. And uh, a loss in ground for Newtown. They're back on their 22. Brian Hetherington, up the top Mossman, down below Sydenham. And the scrum seven metres out from the Newtown quarter line. It's repeating, we will not have a big game for you on Saturday, but we'll resume with St. George and Eastern Suburbs from uh, Jubilee Oval on Saturday week. The entire telecast of that match. Mike Pittman tackled midway between the 22 and halfway, his own end, uh, end of the field. Bill Noonan. As the ground cameras take us down to the play the ball, it's gone out to Wilson. Mike Ryan. Ken Wright up the top. John Tobin down below. Jensen, Brigginshaw. Penalty to East. 
not playing the ball correctly. Is it on the replay, boys? Is that possible? Things like that, you're not looking for all the time. I can't quite. I think he did roll it straight between the loose. You think he did? I think so. Well, the indication from Greg Hartley was there on the replay again that he didn't um, rake it back with the foot. Um, this kick is right in front for Ken Wright, and he's 38 metres out. Not that I want to start any more arguments. I wouldn't let that worry you. <laughs> Might worry some other people around town, but it certainly won't worry me. Ken Wright taking the uh, kick from right in front. Could put Eastern Suburbs in the lead. It's long and low. He's kicked it. The Tricolors. Not to be denied, are back in front at 11.10. Two from two for Ken Wright, the Union International who came on during the third quarter to replace Barry Andrews. Ooh. So here's a game that uh, has suddenly come back to life. And more than ever now, we're likely to see Newtown position uh, Ken Wilson for the drop goal. Uh, that point I was making earlier is entitled to be made uh, with more emphasis now. Newtown very much so would like to get away out of this match with one point from a draw. Hastings turning Newtown around again. By G, you know, these two guys, Hastings and Wilson. Uh, they're great little generals. As the replacement goes out for Eastern Suburbs, Kel Sherry it is, replacing Mike Mossman. Well, they've both gained a tremendous amount of yardage out there this, after, uh, this evening, but possession, though, in this final 10 minutes is going to be very important. And Newtown continue to win the scrum. And there's a bit of a disagreement back where the scrum took place. The uh, two hookers, Stevens and uh, Jensen, having a disagreement. As Jim Walters plays the ball, short of the halfway. Brigginshaw, Wilson, Noonan. The big man stands and looks to offload. I think this is the first time, apart from the, say, 10 minutes in the second quarter, that Newton have shown any urgency in their game. I think they were just sort of content they, to go along. They did appear to have it wrapped up, and all of a sudden, they're only 10 minutes ago, find themselves out of the match. Yes, that uh, bomb by Kevin Hastings and the controversial try has turned the game around, and uh, a penalty from another interesting uh, incident against Mike Ryan, not playing the ball correctly, has seen Eastern Suburbs snatch the lead back at 11-10, with nine minutes to go. Touch judges come in to report the incident involving Kevin Stevens and Barry Jensen. Craig Ellis was also in there. I think he was acting as... Uh, he was looking to break them up, I think. Yeah, I think he was acting as a referee. In fact, there could have been a few uh, heated words between Jensen and Ellis. I think Jensen sort of half looked at him and said, what were you holding me for? I think he was on the receiving end of it, as a matter of fact, Barry Jensen, because one of his teammates was holding him. Anyway, it's all over now, and uh, a Grady chips over the top of the East three quarters and a diving save by Sidman. Now, this dummy half is Kel Sherry. Playing it back to another replacement, Kevin Stevens. Hastings to right, Cleal. A big man away from one tackle, but held by Chris Doyle. The play is right on the halfway mark. Through lane to right, a short ball to Medcalf, and he's tackled again just short of the halfway. A little bit more than eight minutes of time remaining. Lane, Gurr, he puts the left foot kick in. It's a big one down towards the touchline, out on the full. 
Two replacements on for Newtown, Steve Blythe and Trevor Ryan, replacing Jim Walters and Larry Brigginshaw. So Ken Wilson will work the scrums now. One by East. He said Kevin Stevens couldn't hook. It's his first scrum win. <laughs> That's a very vital one, wasn't it? Yes, and Stumpy takes it up towards the halfway. Hasty. Back to Metcalf. Tackler in number 14 is the man they call the axe, Stephen Blythe. Sherry. Lane. Right. Cleals with him. The big man. Right made the break. A floating pass. Oh, Polly picked up beautifully by Schubert. Keeping the game alive. Or keeping the exchange alive, but now into touch. And a penalty to Eastern Suburbs. The man had been effectively tackled. And Newtown put him over the touchline. And so Marty Gurr is going to try and find touch. He will have no trouble in doing that, but finding much ground. Unfortunately, only about five metres for Eastern Suburbs. Stevens coming on to take the tap. His presence on the field, I would think, would let Kevin Hastings think more about his game, maybe, than the captaincy problem, because Stevens is cast in a similar mould, a thinker. They'll be using the six tackles, <laughs> that's one thing oh, they'll be doing. Well. Mm. Lane is calling for it, the halfback. The, uh, the uh, run round for Stevens, but Lane decided to try and go himself. Six metres out from the 22. Through Hastings to Ken Wright, who's made one break, one clean break, and kicked two goals. As Kel Sherry moves up to dummy half. Stevens wants it, that's him in 17. Cleal is coming onto it. Full steam ahead, the big man, down to the 22, and hanging on grimly is uh, Chris Doyle. Last tackle for the Roosters to Hastings, the left foot bomb, sending right Sherry and Gurr through onto O'Grady, mm, who took well, it magnificently in the face of pressure. Great take. He did take it well. It was a well-placed kick too, wasn't it? Yeah. They got through, just came at the right time, but... Um, uh, Grady really took it well, but of course this is uh, ideal for East now because they're going to get possession back and they should be looking to work it again for another six. Coburn away from O'Grady and then almost breaking free of three more tacklers. And here's David Michael coming on the burst from the blind wing, but Sherry didn't realise he was coming and took it out. Newton makes sure they're out to save the five. Stevens. Stevens and Wright would be the two men you could look to for a drop goal from East. In fact, Wright's calling for it, but he's out to the right of the upright. Sydenham, driven by Trevor Ryan. 12 metres out. Hastings, the run round. Schubert, Schubert, getting the pass down to Gary Medcalf. Two metres out from the line now. Last tackle for the Roosters. Out to the left is the place to come. Quick hand from Lane, and Marty Gurr almost uh, raked it in, but it's uh, forced in the end goal by Newtown. So, David Michael now. Hastings, Cleo. Right, Hastings, Gurr, taken just outside the 22. Hastings again. Medcar. <laughs> Penalty to Newtown. An important one too. Pinged in for Shepard. Five minutes to go. East leading by one point. Wilson kicking for touch. Calling on his men. Let's go. This is it. I want the drop goal. I think that I think that's what he's trying to get across to them, that he needs to be positioned for the drop goal. As the free kick is taken. Ogilvy takes it towards centre field. 
Remembering that Newtown had a big win over Manly. East had a win over Brisbane, but not by as many points. So a draw would see Newtown anyway, in front of Eastern Suburbs, as far as entering a quarter-final berth would be concerned, should a draw be the final result here. Wilson, Trevor Ryan, O'Grady, oh, loose pass. It's been tucked by East, though. Wilson stands up, gets the ball back to Pittman. And they're 11 metres now on the east side of the halfway. Put down by Craig Ellis. That's a costly mistake. And the scrum, 38 metres out from the eastern suburbs line. I'm not sure if they do realise about the, uh, the draw. Are they? No, they do, Graham. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I stopped at a red set of... Oh, I stopped at a red set. Yeah, I stopped at a set of lights at, uh, <laughs> at ride on the way down. And a, a bloke, as the penalty goes to East... Of course, it went that way, wasn't it? A bloke sung out from the car adjacent. His name was T. Rodonicus, wanting to know what was the situation in the event of a draw. Well, just the way they spun that ball wide, then they appeared to yeah. be going for a win instead of taking it straight up the middle. Well, you've got to make plenty of uh, yardage yet before you see Wilson go the field goal. Marty Gurr with a very big torpedo punch. And uh, the tap will be taken five metres on the Newtown side of the halfway. Schubert. Put down by Cleo. It's a Newtown ball, is it? No, they've lost it. Another scrum to go down. Six metres on the Newtown side of the halfway. That's Pittman. Wilson telling him to get up and play it quickly. We've got to get on the move. Trevor Ryan. The clock has been stopped tonight. Five minutes out. So... I can't tell you exactly how many seconds there might be remaining in the match. Wilson, O'Grady, oh, that's a costly loss for Newtown, and Ken Wright has knocked it on for East, so another scrum. That's so a delay for anxious, Graham. They are. There's, as you said earlier, there's, there wasn't any urgency in Newtown's play beforehand now, and that's, that urgency now has turned to frustrate, frustration. Well, now, Newtown had the ball, and referee Hartley has ruled a knock-on and another scrum. A, a good scrum win for Newtown. They haven't got much time left, though. O'Grady. Stephen Blythe. 